Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by our channel. My name is Alan Lightstico and I am the youth pastor for Core Student Ministries. I am so honored and thankful that you have checked out our YouTube channel because here at Core Student Ministries, we are deeply passionate about creating digital content that helps you stay connected to your church, to your youth group, and most importantly, to Jesus. And if you could do me a quick favor, can you hit the subscribe button for us down below? Can you also click that little bell icon so that you can be notified every time we upload a video and every time we go live for Wednesday night youth worship? And lastly, can you put a comment down below and just letting us know how we can pray for you because we care deeply and passionately about your faith journey and your spiritual well-being. Now let's jump over to our video for today. Best of us, let's get our hands ready. And on the count of three, as one family, we're going to clap together, all right? So get your hands ready. Get your hands ready. Let's pray about it. Thank you. I'll take that from you. All right, get your hands ready for me, please. Please, 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 please. On the count of three. Count of three, guys. All right. One, two, three. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, guys. Hey, God. We want to thank you so much. Whoop. Uh, for, for today, we want to thank you for, for youth group, for, for wacky games and, and pudding and friendships and community. And God, we just, we ask that as, as we go into this time of worship, that we can continue that energy, that passion, that, that joy, that we get to worship you, that we get to cry out how awesome you are, how much you love us and, and how much we appreciate what you do for us. So God, I just pray for these students. I pray for their lives. I pray that you invade their hearts. That through this music, they can, they can hear your voice. They can feel your presence. And God, as a family, we just, we give you thanks for the students who lead us in worship. And we just lift them up to you. Use them in a mighty and powerful way so that we can feel connected to you. In the name of your son, we pray. Amen. All right, guys, band, I'll leave it to you. My adults, can I have you out there for me, please? All right. Blue is left, red is right. Yeah, okay. Just be careful the pudding that's on the floor. Yes. Yeah. Okay, as long as you stay socially distant, you can come up if you'd like, or you can stand where you are. As long as you don't stand up.
Father, thank you for bringing us all here today, and thank you for just letting us sing these songs and worship you. And I hope that you would just, like, fill us with your Holy Spirit, and I hope everybody has a safe uh, ride home. In your sense, we pray, amen. All right, yeah, give it up for the praise bands. You know, I'll be honest with you. While I heard some conversations, I heard primarily worshiping. And the truth is, you know, I could end this message right here because that is exactly what it means to follow Christ. It's just to sing out, even, even if you're uncomfortable or even if maybe you think that you don't sound very good, the fact that, that you're just brave enough to sing out to God, to say, you know what? Cell phones, technology, friends, I'm going to say, God, you are awesome. So I'm just very proud of all of you guys. That was, that was awesome. Good, good job. I'm very proud of you. So cool. Um, hey, uh, Braden, can we go ahead and play our intro video real quick? Hey, for those of you who are watching online, thank you guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite proud of that one. I made that myself, so thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, it does. Um, yeah. So for those of you who are watching online, uh, Luke got sick today, so we're not really messing with the live stream. We're just kind of shooting it, so sorry you missed that awesome trailer. But over the next four weeks, uh, we're going to be exploring some true stories from scripture and some not so true stories from some of our favorite movies. You know, and since we're going to be watching a lot of movies this month, I thought that we would uh, kick things off with my favorite part of the movies, which is movie candy. So, and I'm going to need help from Natalie, Laura, and Steven on this one. So what I need you to do, and I need to give uh, very explicit instructions, um, is that uh, if you guys could pass these out for me, Natalie, Laura, and Steven. Yep, so you're going to get a uh, individual bag of M&Ms. All right, this is what I need you to do with it. Just hold it, all right? Don't do anything with it just yet. As soon as you get it, yeah, don't eat it. Just hold it, all right? There you go. And then take those for me. Yes, thank you. You can throw it at them? No. Um, all right, so yeah, Braden, we can go to that slide. Go, go to the next one there, Braden. Perfect. Oh, so what we're going to do, we're going to play a little game. We're going to have a little activity. Each of you are getting a pack of M&Ms, and I don't want you to open them just yet. All right, don't open them just yet. But what I need you to do is when I give you the instructions, listen, hey, listen. My friends, my friends, my friends. What you're going to do in a second is you're going to go find someone that either you don't know or don't typically associate with. Then you're going to open up your M&M bag. All right, listen. Then you're going to open up your M&M bag. And based on the M&Ms you get, you're going to ask the other person, or you're going to share with the other person 
whatever color you have in your hand. So for example, let's say I open up my bag and I'm talking to Cheyenne, all right, and I have a yellow M&M. So what I'm gonna tell Cheyenne is something that I love, okay? Cheyenne, I love my wife, Natalie, all right? And you're gonna do that for all the M&Ms you have in your bag. Um, but if you happen to have multiple M&Ms of the same color, well, then you share multiple things. So Cheyenne, I have two red M&Ms, so I love my wife, and I love you guys, all right? Very, very simple, very easy. Uh, and then after we're done with the activity, then you can eat them. So go ahead, open up your M&Ms, and go find someone that you don't know or typically don't associate with. Someone you don't know or someone you typically don't associate with. And then go through those lists. Someone you don't know or someone you typically don't associate with. Someone you don't know or someone you typically don't associate with. No, you do not give them. You do not give your M&Ms. That. Yes. Correct. You just pour them into your hands and you just talk, talk amongst yourselves. So find someone you typically don't associate with or don't know.
top of the world, living high. Right in my pocket. <laughs> Whoa. I was living the life. Things were just the way they should be. With the mind of the sky like a bomb comes some little pumpkin rocket. Now all of a sudden, some strange things are happening. Buzz Lightyear, to the rescue! So we've been learning a, a lot about each other um, tonight. I want to share with, with you a fun fact. This is not actually in my, in my notes. But fun fact, the very first time I saw Toy Story 1, I think I was in like fifth grade, I think. Um, and, and we went after Christmas Eve worship service. We went to the movies. And as soon as we're done with the movies, I went home and I dusted my front lawn with hay because I wanted uh, Santa's reindeer to eat the hay. Fun fact. Yeah, fun fact about me. I know. Well, before Buzz, Woody knew exactly who he was. And he was Andy's favorite toy. He was special. He was important. He was a leader. But Woody began to doubt himself when Andy's attention shifted to Buzz. You know, a guy with skills and qualities and areas of expertise that Woody just really didn't have. So how did Woody react to Andy's new tool? Sad and angry, insecure, fear, self-doubt, and jealousy. You know, as time went on, these feelings didn't go away for Woody. They kept growing until he found himself filled with so much hatred for Buzz that he was even plotting how to get rid of Buzz forever. You know, maybe this story kind of sounds far-fetched, uh, but, it's, but it's not. Uh, the jealousy turning into hatred thing, I mean, that, that's real. The talking toys, that's definitely fake. And, and I want to share with you a, a moment where I kind of felt similar to Woody. You know, I've told you guys uh, plenty of times about my athletic career back when I was in high school. And when I was going into my freshman year, I was kind of ready to move on to a more important team, a travel team. Because uh, the team I was playing on was just kind of a local team, just kind of like here in Livingston, um, how we have local teams for baseball or soccer. And, and I was ready to kind of advance my career and get in front of college scouts. So I spent months doing research. So when I finally found all these teams I wanted to try out for, a buddy of mine who had moved here from, uh, moved to Orlando from, from England right around the same time I had moved to Florida, uh, although he's a year younger than me, I shared these things with him because we wanted to go and play college together and room together, board together. And so as we went out to these tryouts, he just started making all these teams. He had a choice of any team he wanted, but I didn't. Every team I tried out for, I kept getting rejected. And finally, I did make a team, but it was the B team of this Travel State Cup team. They just had too many players, so they had to make another team. And I was so jealous of him because he hardly ever worked at it. In fact, the teams that we tried out for, he didn't even know existed until I told him about it. So then going into my sophomore year, he's now a freshman in high school. He's coming out for high school soccer. 
And I go to the coach before tryouts, because I'm a year older than him, so I can tell the coach these things. And I told the coach, I didn't think he was mature enough for varsity. I didn't think he was big enough, strong enough, or fast enough to play on varsity. I didn't want him to take my limelight. I didn't want him to take away the attention from me because I was insecure, I was jealous. You know, and if you're like me, or Woody for that matter, you felt yourself feel insecure, or maybe you felt fear or jealousy. And the truth is, if you have felt that, you're not alone. This is a problem that goes way back in time. You know, we look at the book of Genesis. This is the very first book of the Bible. We actually see the first instance of both murder and jealousy. So we're going to read from Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. So get your Bible out or Bible apps or whatever. It's also going to be up on your screen. Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Listen to God's word. Adam lay with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, With the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. You know, we don't really know why God wasn't happy with Cain's offering. Uh, but if I had to guess, maybe it's because Cain had an attitude problem. Even if he didn't have one before his offering, he definitely had one afterwards. You know, Cain was so angry with God. He was jealous and so afraid of not being seen as important or worthy of love that he even killed his own brother as a result. Now, Cain isn't the only person in Scripture who attacked their brother out of jealousy. Uh, later on in the book of Genesis, we meet 17-year-old guy named Joseph and his 11 brothers and then his dad, Jacob. Now, we all know that parents aren't supposed to have favorite kids. Well, but Jacob, he didn't seem to get this message. So Jason, uh, Joseph was Jacob's favorite. And Jacob didn't even try to hide this from the other kids. Joseph got the bulk of his father's attention and affection. In fact, he even got a really fancy coat because of it. The brothers all knew Joseph was their dad's favorite. And they were not happy about it, especially when Joseph started having dreams that he would someday rule over his brothers, and then he started bragging to them about it. Now, time's kind of running short, so I'm going to kind of summarize the next set of Scripture. We're in Genesis chapter 37, verses 5 through 11, and 18 through 36. But here is kind of the footnotes of this story. So Joseph has two dreams. In both of these dreams, he talks about how he's going to rule over his parents and his brothers. Well, they confront him on it like, you really think that you're going to be our king, that you're going to rule over us and reign over us? No, 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 that's, that's not going to work. So the 11 brothers, what they do is they, they put together this plot to kill him. All right? They just want to take him out to the wilderness, kill him, and then say that some crazy animal attacked him. Well, one of the brothers named Reuben, like, guys, I'm not so sure that's a good idea. Like, I mean, he, I know he's annoying, and I know he brags about his dreams, but he's still our brother. We can't kill him for it. So this is, this is what we need to do. All right, this is what we need to do. Let's just strip him naked, and then we'll throw him into a well. All right, a dried up well, we'll just throw him there. And whoever happens to come along, they can take him and do whatever they want with him. And so the brother's like, that's a really good idea. So that's exactly what they do. 
they, they take him out to the wilderness, they strip him naked, and they throw him in this, this whale, whale, well. Well, what ends up happening is they realize, you know, they're going to get caught. He's going to climb out of this well, or someone's going to see him and bring him back to Jacob. It's just, it's not going to work. So they go back, they get Joseph out of this well, and while they're doing this, some slave traders happen to go buy him. And they sell Joseph, their brother, into slavery into Egypt. All because they were jealous. Uh, they were jealous that Joseph was Jacob's favorite son and that God was giving him these, these visions. You know, and just like Woody or Cain, you know, these men allowed their fears and their insecurity to turn into jealousy, which then turned into anger and hatred. You know, like Woody and like Cain, Joseph's brothers came up with a plan to get rid of the person who made them feel insecure and insignificant. The only reason Joseph didn't end up like Abel is because one of Joseph's brothers wanted to spare his life. So instead, Joseph was sold into slavery, and the remaining brothers told their father, Jacob, that Joseph had died. You know, we might think that jealousy is pretty harmless, something that we kind of all experience from time to time. But these stories show us how destructive jealousy can be. You know, many years after Cain, Abel, Joseph, and Joseph's brothers, some of the first Jesus followers wrestled with jealousy as well. Now, because they followed Jesus, they didn't attack or throw anyone into a well, but they were getting pretty worked up, fighting and comparing themselves to each other. So, Paul, he kind of gives some advice on, on how to deal with this jealousy. And this, I actually do want to read. But I'm really going to need your, your undivided attention for this because it can get a little complicated and a little confusing. So we're in 1 Corinthians, which is in the New Testament. We're in chapter 12. We're going to read verses 4 through 12. So listen to God's word. And listen very, very carefully. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of, of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He gives them to each one just as He determines. The body is a unit. Though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. You know, there is a lot to unpack in those, those verses. So my first question is, who is God? What is God like? Uh, for starters, God is generous. We see that in verse 4. God is trustworthy. Look at verses 5 and 6. God is caring, verse 7. God is just and fair, verse 11. So if I had to sum it up, I would say God is good. So now, knowing that about God, who are we? The first thing we need to know is God is with you. He's with us. Look at verses 4 through 6. You have a purpose, and part of your purpose is to let God use you for the good of others. Look at verse 7. Your gifts are unique to you. You don't have the same gifts that I do, and I don't have the same gifts that you do. Look at verses 8 through 10. God didn't make mistakes when He created you. He knew exactly what He was doing. Look at verses, verse 11. Your identity isn't just about you. It's found in community with others, what we're doing here tonight. 
but it's also found in Jesus. Look at verse 12. You know, jealousy, Paul shows us, isn't just destructive, but honestly, guys, jealousy is illogical. You were created by a God who is good, a God who is generous, a God who is trustworthy, a God who is caring, a God who is just, and a God who is fair. You are known and carefully designed by your Creator, who is always with you, even when it feels like He's not. You have a unique purpose that only you can fulfill. I can't fulfill your purpose for you, and you can't fulfill mine. And there's a whole community who is here to love you, surround you, and support you in that purpose. That's what Core Student Ministries is about. That's what we're about. And if you've ever struggled with jealousy, or if you've ever felt insecure or unimportant, guys, I need you to remember this. So listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. We can have confidence in who we are because of who our Creator is. We can have confidence in who we are because of who our Creator is. Because of who God is, we can trust how God has made us. And if you're new with us, the first Wednesday of every month, we have communion. Now, we don't technically have communion because I'm not ordained. It's actually a love feast. It's a remembrance of communion. But that's what this was all about. So my junior high girls, if you're in sixth grade through eighth grade, I want you to come up and grab a cup for me. If you're in junior high, if you're a junior high girl, come on up and grab a cup for me. If you're a junior high girl, come on up and grab a cup for me. If you're a junior high girl, come on up and grab a cup. If you're a junior high girl. Junior high boys, if you're a junior high boy, sixth grade through eighth grade, come on up and grab a cup. Junior high boys, come grab one. Senior high girls, come on up. Senior high girls, come on up. Ooh, burn. And senior high boys, come on up, senior high boys. And also the adults, you guys can come up as well. Yep. Senior high boys and adults. Senior high boys and adults. And Henry. So guys, over 2,000 years ago, listen, we're almost done. We're almost done. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus was sitting in the upper room with his, with his best friends. And they were celebrating the Passover meal. And he was trying to help them better understand who God was. So that they could understand who they are and their purpose. You know, we have this little wafer. You can go ahead and pull the wafer out for me. You can go ahead and pull the wafer out. You know, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And, and he was like, listen, here's the truth. I love you. All right? I have tried for so long to be back in right relationship with you. But every time I try, you ignore me. You disobey me. So you know what I'm going to do? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to send my son to die on the cross for you because I love you so much. I can't stand to be away from you. So I, I'm going to take this bread. I'm going to break it. This is my body that I'm going to break for you so that you don't have to take the punishment that you deserve. Because the truth is you are sinners. You're disrespectful. You're rude. You talk during, during the supper. But I love you anyway, and, and I want you to, to partake in my, in my love. So he passed the bread around, and he's like, take and eat, and remember me, remember my love. So take your little wafer, and you can go ahead and eat it. Yeah, it's cardboard, so it's probably not the most delicious thing. But then he took the cup. He took the cup, and he blessed it, and he gave thanks for it. And he said, this is it, guys. This is the final promise. I'm going to shed my blood to wash you clean so that you can be perfect like I am because I love you. 
because you are the most important thing in this entire universe. And I'm going to die on the cross for you because I love you. So what I want you to do is I want you to take the cup, and I want you to drink it, and I want you to remember me. So drink and remember what Christ did for you. That's your purpose, guys. Your purpose is to love God, to be in a relationship with God. Will you pray with me? Hey, God, we want to thank you so much. Man, God, you are just so awesome to be able to enjoy this meal, to enjoy each other's friendship, to enjoy, you know, our games and our music and true story and, and toy story. Man, God, you're just the way that you love us and the way that you fight for us and the way that you give us purpose. I mean, it's, it's just, it's mind-boggling. It's like totally outside of what we can comprehend, and we are so grateful. Because without you, Heavenly Father, without your sacrifice on this cross, we have nothing. It doesn't matter if we have a four-wheeler. It doesn't matter if we go hunting. It doesn't matter if we have giant houses or cell phones or Netflix. It doesn't matter. We have nothing, God, without you. Father, you give us everything. You give us life. You give us purpose. And Abba, Father, I pray for these kids. I pray that tonight they realize that purpose, that they embrace that purpose, that they accept that purpose. And God, just give us safe travels as we leave here tonight. Give us a good night rest so that we can build your kingdom tomorrow. And we pray every single word in the name of your Son, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, guys, I love you very much. Hey, guys. Thanks for checking out our video today. Up on your screen is going to be a link to, to our channel so that you can go and check out other content that we have created for you. And also there is going to be a link to a video that YouTube thinks that you want to watch next. Now, if that's not the video you want to watch next, again, I highly encourage you to go over to our channel and check out our various playlists that we have because something in those videos might be what you need right now. Again, thank you so much for checking us out, and we'll see you in the next, next video. Bye.